This is a grade 12 lesson regarding box and whisker diagrams. Before we start with the box and whisker diagram, let us just do a short revision of two concepts that we accounted earlier. The one is that of the median. And let us just think for a moment, how did we determine the median? We determined the median by founding the middle value for a data set. In other words, we can also say that the median divides the data set into two equal parts. Another definition that we worked with before, or concept, is that of range. Now, in each set of data, we will always have uh, the lowest value and the highest value. And the range, then, is when we subtract the lowest value from the highest value so that we can see how far the data are spread out. Another way of talking about spread or to go and look at how data are spread is to look at what we call quartiles. What the quartiles do is it divides the data set into four smaller groups. Remember earlier we spoke about the median which divided the data into two smaller groups. If there is our set of data, there is our lowest value, our highest value. In the middle, we put the median, which is dividing the data set exactly into two equal parts. If we now divide here on the left-hand side, the data again into two equal parts. So that on this side, we have a quarter of our final amount of data and here a quarter of our data, then we refer to this dot about value here as the quartile one or the lower quartile. Similarly, we can also take the data which is here on the right hand side and divide it now again into two equal parts. This will give me again a, a situation where a quarter of all of the data will be here and a quarter of all of the data will be in this box. And we call this Q3, quartile 3, or the upper quartile. That will be my first group of data, second, third, and fourth. But what is very important is that you must remember that at the end of the day, a quarter of the data will be in group 1, a quarter will be in group 2, a quarter in group 3, and a quarter in group 4. Instead of saying a quarter, we can of course say 25% of the data. So, all in all, there is for you a summary for the measures of spread. We are going to take, get our median, which is dividing the data into two equal groups, and then we are going to divide on each side of the median, again, the data into two equal groups, so that we end up with four equal groups, where in each group there is a quarter of the data, or in another language we can say 25% of the data. If we look at this that I'm presenting to you here, I'm giving you here the marks of 24 learners, and the percentage that they obtained for a test that they wrote in mathematical literacy. These marks of the learners were already now arranged from the smallest to the highest value that the learners obtained percentage-wise in the test. Now, if we search for the middle value or for the median value, we try to find the value which is going to, put, uh, to divide this data set exactly into two equal parts. Now, if you can look, you will see here are 24 learners in um, this class. And if we are going to look then, where is this data divided exactly into, you will see it will be here, between 37 and 39. Why do I say that? The marks of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of the learners will be on that side. And the marks of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of the learners will be on this side. Okay. The median then, we can say it is lying between 37 and 38. And therefore, we know, sorry, between 37 and 39, 
therefore we know the median is 38. On the other hand now, I have now again on this side, there is 12 values in the set of data on this side. So if I am now going to divide the data again into two equal parts, I'm going to get the situation where I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values on that side and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values on this side of the division. Okay. I can then go further and also divide this bottom part into two equal sets so that at the end of the day there are the marks of one, two, three, four, five, six learners in this group and the marks of one, two, three, four, five, six learners in this group. Okay? Usually when we do our box and whisker plots we do it horizontally. So what I've done, I've ta taken for you that data that you had there, the marks of the learners from 16 to 85, and I have written it for you horizontally. We already established that the median is 38. In the middle between 37 and 39, giving us 12 values on this side and 12 values on that side. The lower quartile then, the part that is now giving, are going to put for us on this side, which is going to on this side of the median, uh, divide for us the data exactly in two is going to be after six numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on this side we will also then have one, two, three, four, five, six. So our Q1, which is going to be here, is between 25 and 27. And in this case we are going to call it 26. Again, on this side, we can, on this side of the medium, again take the data and divide it into two equal groups. If we do that, we will have the situation where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces of data. Can you see, if I write my Q3 there, I can call this Q2, but this Q2, it is also called the median. Can you see that I have divided the data now into four equal groups? In each of these um, quartiles that I have here, I, I call them quartiles because it is uh, in four equal groups. I have six pieces of data. One, two, three, four, five, six. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and there is 6, and there is 6. To get my Q3, I will now have to say 56 plus 59 and divide it by 2, so that I can find that value which is exactly in the middle between 56 and 59. And that will be 57,5. that is going to be here. Okay? If I now draw the box and whisker plot, I simply bring all of these values over where I'm going to mark out for the learners on a scale from zero up to 100% who got what marks. Now you will know, note that my scale is now going from zero up to 100 because the least that the learner could score was zero and the most that the learner could score was 100. If I bring that information now over, I can now say the lowest value that was obtained by a learner was 16. If I plot that 16 now on the line here above this axis where I'm going to represent for you the marks, I can put it just there of 15. So there is 16 is my lowest value. Then I've got my lower quartile. Now my lower quartile is here on 26. And if I now plot my median, my median is between 37 and 38. If I go to this scale, here is 30, 35, 37 and 39. So 38 is about there. My median was 38. And then if I go 
to my upper quartal, my upper quartal is on 57,9. Okay? If I now take these and I join it as follows, I'm going to join the median and the lower quartal with what we call a little box. Okay, between the median and the upper quartile, or Q3, we then also draw a box. And now we go to the highest value. The highest value, or the learner with the highest, highest mark in this case, at 85. And we draw a line towards 85. Now you will see that although in the beginning I placed the data into four equal sets, when we draw our box and whisker, this line and the two boxes are not necessarily every um, one of them exactly the same shape. What does this mean? It means simply that when we are interpreting data, we must go and look at the spread because box and whisker is showing us the spread. I am still having the marks of the first six learners up to here. So here are six learners marks. Here are six learners marks. Here are six learners marks. And here are six learners marks. But what does all of this tell us? It tells us that the marks of the six learners down below here is very close to each other. It's from 16 to 26. If we look at that little range from 26 to 16, those six learners, the marks are condensed in about 10, from in a spread of 10 marks from 16 to 26. If we look at the next six learners, the marks are from 26 to 38. The range is about 12. In other words, it means that those learners' marks are a little bit more spread out already than this year. If we look from 38 to 57,9, here is the big gap, meaning it is still the marks for six learners, but that that marks has now been spread out. You will see, if you look from um, 38, which is our core uh, Q2, up to 57,5, you will see there's quite a long um, step between different marks. 39, 39, it stayed the stay, a little step up to 40, then the next learner at 54, then 56. So it shows us that the marks are spread out. And finally, if we look from 59 to 85, there is an even bigger spread. 59, 64, 65, 66, 66, 85, before we then can come up to that point there. Very important. Still you must remember, although the box and whisker plot is showing us the spread, that we have divided the data set, that data set, into four equal parts. But because be from 16 to 7 we have a jump of 1, from 17 to 18 we have a jump of 2, from 18 to 20 we have a jump of 2, from 20 to 25 we have a jump of 5, because those jumps are not equal, when we put it in the box and whisker plot, we will also not get that these boxes and these lines are going to give us necessarily equal, um, are going to be equal in length. So grade 12, the key points of understanding when you are busy with the uh, box and whisker plot is that we must remember that the quartiles divide the data into four equal groups, but that this four equal groups are four equal groups depending on the set of data that you are having. Putting a quarter of the data in group one, a quarter of the data in group two, a quarter in three, and a quarter in group four.